This is Carl at National RV Detroit and I'm going to walk you through this 2023 Puma travel trailer model 32BHQS. So this is more of a how-to video. I'm going to show you some of the features and how they work, okay? Um, so let's start at the door side rear area. Okay, so you have a, a griddle a wash basin with fresh water and a refrigerator. Uh, this all pulls out, or this section here pulls out, so um, let me see if I can lock this in place with one hand to show you. There we go. Okay. So this particular one you have to plug in um, to the LP system manually. It comes with a hose and the hose will attach here and then right down here there's a quick connect it attaches there so you, uh, you have to use the plug to plug it in. This is the hose right here the quick connect hose and this is a sprayer right here. The sprayer will hook into spray ports we'll, uh, I'll point them out when we get to them um, that works with a quick, quick connect also. Let me see if I can get this back in one-handed here. I think I can. There we go. So, also um, you have power stabilizers. So you have one switch for both rear and another switch for both of the front. So this would be the um, rear. It's both of them. Okay. Now when we walk around the other side, we'll take a look here. Okay, these are the type of stabilizers. It has a stud with a, with a pin through it right there on the, other, on the off door side. That means you can actually crack, crank them manually if you needed to. You can uh, get yourself out of trouble if they happen to fail for whatever reason. Let me walk up here for a second and let's see what we've got in here. we got nothing. Look at this one. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so you have this crank here. You can see the other, like I said, the the other side, the off door side of the of the um, of the power stabilizers has a pin with a or, or a shaft with a pin through it, right? So this has a cylinder with a slot cut in it to fit over that. So you can use this to crank it manually if you need to. Also, if you look, some of the slide rooms have the same thing. You can see there's a hole here. Um, let me see if I can get a picture of it here. There's a shaft with a pin through it just like, I don't know if you can see that, but it's there just like um, you would see on the stabilizers. You can actually crank the opposing slide out manually if you need to. You have another one here, another hole there with a, uh, that lines up with a shaft with a, <laughs> a shaft with a pin through it. So you can crank the, ma the main slide also and there'll also be another one for this one on the other side. We'll show you when we get there. So you can use this crank for all those things. It's a lot of cranking but it's it beats trying to uh, you know ruin your vacation or something. So it's just a, a backup plan. To, the stabilizers and the, the uh, slide rooms are very reliable, but just in case, you've got that to fall back on. Okay, so you have a power awning with LED strip, outside speakers. This um, is the vent for the range hood. So if you're running the range hood fan to vent to the outside, you gotta grab, the, there's thumb holes right there, and you just gotta pop the baffle freely so it flaps freely as it vents. So anytime you're running that fan, you want to you want to open that baffle so it flaps freely. When you're when you're traveling or in storage, you can keep it shut. All righty. So while we're on this side, this is a black tank flush right here. So um, basically, after you've dumped your black tank, you can leave the black tank valve open and uh, hook the hose right up here at the dump station. Turn it on, and it'll spray the inside of the tank out, clean off the sensors. It does a really good job. Like it says here though on the sticker, make sure that the valve is open before you turn the water on. 
Alrighty, so we have TV out here, TV signal out, we have power, and then there's a bracket to hang a TV out here if you choose to. This is the city, or excuse me, the, the fresh water tank fill. Now the most common way to get water to this trailer is the city water hook up on the other side. I'll show you that when I get over there, but um, keep in mind if, if you go to a state park that like has a fill station when you first pull into the campground but there's no plumbing on the campsite for example, you can pre-fill this fresh water tank, use the onboard pump to pump the water. I'll show you the switch when we get inside. So even if you don't have city water, you can take the water with you or fill it along the way and uh, still have uh, all the features. Okay, so, all right, so this, this water heater here either works on gas or electric. Right now it's drained, as you can see. The, the drain plug's missing, this is it right here. It's an anode rod with a inch and a sixteenth six point hex on it. So you need an inch and a sixteenth six point socket, about a six inch extension in a breaker or a ratchet to break it free. But that's where you drain it. Um, never run the water heater on gas or electric when it's empty. You always make sure you fill it back up before you turn, turn it on. Now when it comes to the, the, uh, this switch right here, this rocker right here, on and off, that controls the electric heating element that's behind this cover. Um, so keep in mind, once you turn it on, you got to make sure you have water in the tank and it'll, it'll, uh, the heating coils will heat up the water. If you need a faster recovery, like a couple people are taking showers in a, right after each other or something, you can turn on the gas burner and it recovers a lot faster, okay? All right, let's see if there's anything else I missed. Nope, that's good. So we'll keep walking. That's just a tire cover and there's your crank, of course. Now, the crank, which is three-quarter inch, also will work on this. So if your, if your tongue jack happened to fail, your power tongue jack, you got, you know, you got uh, a hitch light plus uh, extended retract. If this failed for any reason, you can pull this plug out and use that same crank on the hex that's under that plug. And you can crank this up and down and get hitch and unhitch in an emergency also. So that's another, another way to get around it. You have two uh, LP tanks full with automatic change of regulator. Deep cycle marine battery. Uh, this is a kill switch for the battery just in case you need, want to shut it off completely. Um, you can shut it off when, like when you put it in storage for the winter. You can just turn that off. Otherwise you want it on so it recharges and all that. Alright, so let's see what else we've got here. Okay. This is that, that little doohickey there. That's a, a reducer to reduce your, your cord your power cord down to a 20 amp so you can plug it in at home if you needed to. This is your dump hose and you access from this from the trailer but you can see this is where you would install a washer dryer combo or a stackable washer dryer. I'll show you that when we get inside. Alright, this is the city water connection, the one I told you about. That's the most common way to get water to the trailer. You have an outside shower for kids and dogs and feet. There's the hole with the shaft on the other side to crank the the door side slide out in and out in an emergency. You got a 30 amp, or excuse me, you got a 50 amp power cord, 30 feet long. Um, we also give you the reducers to reduce this down to a 30 amp, and then again down to a 20. So you get all the reducers with it. Um, these are, uh, let's see, what we got here dump valves, as you can see. Um, there's three of them right there, okay. Oh, what else have we got? That's just the that's just the uh, vent for the furnace. Keep keep in mind it gets hot. Uh, here's another uh, gray tank here. So the second gray tank dump valve. You have um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but you have slide toppers all the way around now. Okay, this is campground uh, cable and satellite in right here. You have a. Uh, pre-wired for a backup camera so you could add a backup camera if you want. It takes a Furion camera that fits in that housing. Also it comes with a ladder which is great because the manufacturer states you should inspect the roof every 60 days. So keep in mind that you need someone to look at the roof regularly and make sure there's no cracking or separation at any of the sealant. Make sure there was no damage to any of the roofing attachments or roofing material by low branches or road debris flying up there, anything like that. Just give it a good look over to make sure everything's in good shape. You're just protecting your investment. Okay. All right, so let's go inside. Okay. So, 
let's see what we have here so this is your power awning here as you can see it never leave it out unattended you got three slide rooms here you got your lights all your lights of course um, the water heater I showed you how to turn it on electric with that switch in the lower left hand corner right if you want to light the gas you do it here and there's the fault light for you so then you light the gas from in here to turn your water pump on remember water pump to pump out of the fresh water tank if you don't have city water you do it there you can also use that to winterize the trailer um, these are your gray tanks your black and gray let me see what we got here before I we, I believe this has two two black tanks yes okay so these are the secondary black and gray tanks so it would be the one in the back by the, the, the entry door for example the toilet in the back by the entry door and the black tank is right below it that's what these are here and your main ones are right here fresh water front main uh, bathroom so on and so forth battery um, it graduates up in one third increments and uh, once you get past two thirds you gotta start thinking about dumping it of course so that's all pretty self-evident there it says here the dining -out table must be in the down position when you bring in the slide room. I suppose that's so it doesn't bang accidentally and hit the refrigerator door or something, I'm guessing. So make sure you put that down before you travel. Okay. So, you have a fireplace, and this is the remote for the fireplace. Um, this is a good space heater. So let's see what we've got here. Low and high, those are the fan speeds. It's a really good space heater. Now, um, here you can change the crystals, different colors of the crystals, and you can also change the appearance of the fire, like that. It also has a timer on it, right here, so you can set it to turn on or turn off as you choose. Um, so it's a really good space heater. It runs on AC power, campground power, so it's a good thing because you can. Um, you know you got a limited supply of LP gas so on those days where you don't quite need to to run the LP first you can just run that okay this one here is for the sound bar here so this has AM FM radio as a USB so you could put all your albums on one USB drive and take them with you for example um, it has Bluetooth so you can hook up wirelessly from your phone or your tablet uh, this HDMI is an in, so if you wanted to go into the system, let's say with a portable Blu-ray player, for example, you just go right in there. Very simple. Uh, you got two speaker zones, one and two. One is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer. And then it has all the typical radio functions also. So it does a lot. Your TV is on a, a swing-out bracket. And it locks into place, it looks like, so you don't have to use a strap, yes. Um, you can see this green light here. That should always be green. You can shut it off by pushing this button, but you always want it on when you're using the antenna. So this is the antenna digital signal booster, so you always want it on green or you won't get a good picture. This is, they're telling you here that this is pre-wired for a Wi-Fi, a public Wi-Fi booster, <clears throat> which consists of an antenna on the roof where you, there's also another port up there where you can hook the antenna up. And um, Behind here, you'd find the wires to hook up a router that would sit here. So keep that in mind. That's what this is about. Is just telling you it's pre-wired for that system. If you're interested, you go to kingconnect.com and they've got a few different options. Make sure you get the one with this antenna on the roof, though. Um, it's important to have that part of it. Okay, that's obviously your remote for your for your TV. All right, let me pick up the pace here. I'm running out of time on this. Um, This thing will start a new file on me after about 27 minutes if I'm not careful here. So this is the power converter. So this converts uh, 110 AC, 120 AC to 12 volt DC. So you have your regular circuit breakers like you see at home, 120 AC, they're all labeled. That's like the distribution center you have at home. Then you you have a 12 volt fuses here. So this, can, this takes 12 volt, when you're plugged in, it takes uh, 120 AC and then it'll convert it to 12 volt DC here. That's where your 12 volt comes from. Also, it's a battery tender, so it'll sense how much energy your battery needs and keep your battery charged all the time too, as long as you're plugged in. So when you're plugged in, this charges your battery. When you're pulling down the road, your tow vehicle charges the battery. That's the power converter. This is the carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green. If not, you get it serviced. Um, if it goes off, it's detected carbon monoxide or LP gas. 
You take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off at the front, figure out what's going on. And if it beeps very slowly, same tone but very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. Okay? They're here. Let's do this. LP is good. This is the, the, the test. Carbon oxide coming up. Good. And then a low battery alarm. And then back to green. It should always be green. If not, get it serviced. Okay. The refrigerator is a 12 volt compressor refrigerator. So it runs on 12 volts. Always keep that latch so you don't damage it. Your microwave works like any other microwave. This is the range hood fan I told you about. If you're going to use the fan, make sure you open the baffle on the outside. You also have a light. Your, I don't know if he's got the gas turned on here, so let me see here. But Basically, you have the sparker here. You turn it clockwise to spark. Then you have three knobs and three burners. Then you have the oven here. So let's see. Yeah, see, he's, at, he's probably got it shut off right now. So anyway, it's that simple. You just spark it to, to light it. Um, also, if you want to light the oven, it's a little different. All the way to the back at the bottom is a pilot light. You can see me. Maybe I can spark it so you can see it. Anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the oven knob, go to the picture of the pilot light, depress it, keep it depressed during the whole lighting procedure. You spark it until you see a light down here. After it lights, you still hold this in for another 10 seconds to heat it up with thermocouple. Then you go to operating temperature. When you shut it off, the pilot light goes out. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. There's any keys right here if I haven't mentioned it. Okay. Let's see what we have here. This is a jackknife, I believe. Yeah, that's a jackknife sofa. Sofa that turns into a bed. You can also drop this table down, turn it into a bed. Um, okay. Where's the thermostat? Let's see. Over here. So this is your thermostat for heating and cooling. It's very self-evident. You just hit the mode, fan speed, that sort of thing. If they give you an option for fan speed, always use auto. If they give you the option, it works like all thermostats do. All right, so this is the half bath here. That's the second exit door right there. Um, has a GFCI, so keep in mind there will be two of them in this trailer. Even, all the plugs in the trailer are wired through one of these, even the one on the outside. So if you're using a, 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 an appliance outside and it pops, you're going to reset it in here. Um, the uh, toilet works like, like any RV toilet. It's got a flush pedal right here. Right? The black tank is directly below. Um, when you're hooked up to water, you pull in the camper and you hook up your power and your water. You'll come in here, you put a dose of chemical in each toilet. So we put a dose of chemical in there, then you stand on the pedal, water will come out, and you stand on it long enough to put about a gallon of water in there. You have to have gallon, you have to have at least a gallon of water, some people use more, and chemical in it before you start using it, otherwise the smell will be terrible and it can get clogged up, so you always, you never run it dry. Okay, alrighty, and that, I'll go to the front bathroom too, that, the same thing applies here, this is more of a master bathroom because it has a shower in it. Everything is the same, as you would expect, in the same model toilet. So just remember, chemical and water in there. And you also have a, a vent up here also, a power vent. This one I'm sure does too, I, I would imagine, yes. Up there also. Okay. Sorry about my lousy camera work here, but I've got, this is what I have to work with, so. All right, so here are the bunkhouse. You have a backer plate here to put a TV bracket. There's your hookups for TV, of course. Um, this you can, you can, um, let's see. This one here folds up. As you can see, it'll fold down to a bunk. Um, and this, this will jackknife flat. So you actually got four bunks in here if you need it. Um, but if you leave it up, you can just sit here and watch TV and hang out, whatever. So the rest of it is pretty self-evident what, it, what it's for. Okay. Next we have the, uh, the master bedroom, which is here, okay, so you have, um, this is a 50 amp system, so, and there's a vent here, but this vent, this is where you would add a second air conditioner if you wanted to, so that's, I'm sure, that's what that sticker says, I'm sure, so if you were going to add a second air conditioner, you've got enough amperage because you've got a 50 amp system, this would come off, the vent would come off and the, the, the air conditioner drops right into place. 
you'd have your controls right on the air conditioner so that's where that would go um, remember I told you that this is pre plumbed and wired for a washer dryer stackable or you could or a combo whichever one you want but this is where it would go right here if you wanted it and then you have wardrobe and you know the usual stuff you have some storage underneath the bed like, like most trailers okay all right so I think that does it let me look around here before I stop uh, I think that's everything yeah that's good so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit um, please remember what I said about inspecting the roof that's an important thing and uh, do it every 90 60 90 days I think the manufacturer says 60 on this one but do it regularly and if you see an issue take care of it immediately um, and right now this trailer is winterized so there's antifreeze in the system and it's it's ready to be uh, well, it's ready for the winter anyway. I'm looking to make sure after I say this because they don't. Yeah, so it has antifreeze in it. So, so it's all set for the winter then. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much.